Welcome to today's webinar. Our topic today is scripting in RFM6 blocks and global center. Um, my name is Carly Lessmann and I'll be your moderator today. So I work here at Global Software in the marketing department. So I'm responsible for the webinars and newsletters. And um, yeah, so that's from my side. And my colleagues um, will present the webinar today and answer your questions, but they can introduce themselves. Hi everyone, sorry there was a problem in my webcam I think. Uh, my name is Dokan Kartash and today I'll be your presenter. I work as a product engineer with Global Software and I'm responsible for developing and testing web services and API products. Hello, Hello my name is Jaroslav Brach and I'm the lead of the team which is responsible for the development of uh, web service and uh, JavaScripting inside the application, and today I'll be answering your questions, which you could have during the webinar. Hi, I'm Andreas Niemeyer, and um, I'm uh, take care about the questions also here in chat uh, for this webinar, and um, I'm responsible for all new features here by Global. Um, we uh, collecting all features, what coming in from the different channels, and take care what is uh, important, not important, and decide if it should be done with Mr. Global together. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Now we can switch off our cameras so everyone can see the full screen. Okay. And so for your information, uh, we always encourage everyone to ask questions throughout the presentation. So here on the right side of your screen, you have the control panel where you can ask your questions. And if by chance we don't get to all the questions, we'll certainly send you a follow-up email afterwards. Uh, the other way is to um, watch the entire webinar and send your questions to info at global.com after the webinar. Okay, so that's uh, from my side. And uh, now I'll hand over to my colleague who will present the webinar. Okay. Uh, now I hope everyone can my screen. Okay. So let me first introduce you the content of today's webinar. Uh, today I'll be explaining three topics which are related to each other. The first topic is in app scripting, which is a direct interaction interface with Recapital. I'll explain what are the benefits and application areas of this technology, how you can access the source codes and examples of it. And the second topic is the Global Center, which is a standalone application for organizing projects, models, templates, and blocks. And the Global Center is the platform for accessing and editing all your blocks. Related to that, our last topic is blocks. I'll show you how to create different types of blocks and how to use them afterwards. After all the explanations, there will be a live coding session together. The first example will be directly in the RFM console, so we will see the interaction immediately. And the second example, I will program it in an external IDE and save it for parametric use. And for the last example, I will create a dynamic block in Global Center. If you have no experience with coding or JavaScript, there is no need to concern. I will be explaining all the details and also there is enough examples that you can make some small changes and meet your needs in our program. So let's begin with the slides now. Um, the first topic is in-app scripting with the new generation of RFM. Now we are offering an in-app scripting console and script manager integrated in the user interface. With this feature, you can set or get information about all the objects via the console. This integrated console is responsive in JavaScript programming language. 
The advantage of in-app scripting is all the functions are developed as high-level functions. In other words, it is easy to read and write, and all the codes are stored in GitHub as a public repository. This means it's an open source project and everyone can see the source code and everyone can contribute this project. So what are the advantages of scripting? Uh, well, firstly, you can parameterize the model easily. It is possible to create some variables in your script and create parametric models on top of these variables. I will show how to do it in our example. Also, you can automate some tasks. Let's say you're analyzing similar structures often. That means you can save your scripts and easily reuse them. Also, if you want to find out the properties of already defined objects, you get all the information of an object via scripting, including geometry, loads, loading, and add-on data. So let's talk about JavaScript language. Um, this scripting console based on JavaScript 5 language. Since it's a fast and interpreted language, it is easy to write your code in JavaScript. And there are many resources online about it. You can write your scripts directly on the integrated console, or you can use any code editor to create your script. Then you can access your saved scripts via script manager. This manager connects to a local file in the global folder named scripts, which I will, you, I will show you in the examples. I would mention that we are storing high-level functions in, a, in an open source library. You can access this library under our GitHub account. If you want to contribute or report a bug or request a feature, feel free to visit our GitHub account. There is a GitHub page on the repository for our functions. This you can use to find out the right arguments of the functions and the types of arguments. There are some examples in our GitHub repository already, but you can find our default examples under your installation files also. I will place our example under that file. Plus, we will talk about global center in the next slide. There you can find our intelligent blocks. This means you can find hundreds of JavaScript scripts embedded in the global center for all types of structures. We believe you can find some inspiration in those blocks also. So what is the global center? The global center is a standalone program to organize your projects, storing your models and template files. In global center, you can also access XRenet to leave your customer data and purchased licenses. The most attractive feature of the program is the ability to store dynamic blocks. This means you can access your scripted blocks via Dolba Center and insert them in the program easily. At this point, I should explain what are dynamic or, in other words, intelligent blocks. In Alpha 6 and I should have 9, beside the default blocks, one can create their own block for feature reuse. There are three different types of blocks to use this feature. For creating non parameterized blocks, it's enough to save an existing model as a block. After that, you can insert a solid block in your models. Also, it is possible to add some parameters to change a property in your model in every insert. The last one is dynamic or intelligent blocks. In this feature, you can link a JavaScript file to your block and you can create multiple inputs and parameters with this code in your block. Uh, let me quickly jump into our GitHub page. <coughs> I'd like to show you, you can find our company as Dulba Software in github.com. We have some repositories. I will go to today's topic, JavaScript library. Here you can find our source code in includes folder. And for example, let's have a look at line basic objects such as this is the source code of it. So here you can find the right parameters and argument types and also the assets if you get some problems, you can read the source code here. Also, if you would like to uh, create a uh, bug or feature request, you can go to the issues part and create it. Also, if you would like to contribute our library, you can create a pull request, then we are going to review it and merge it. There you can find our GitHub page. In this GitHub page, you can go to the library and, for example, take a look at the line again. And you can find the right arguments and the description of the arguments in our GitHub page. Okay, 
Um, I'll jump into the program quickly and go on with the examples. Let me, yeah, okay. First, I'd like to show you how you can access the Toolbar Center. If you go into Toolbar and cl click Toolbar Center icon, you can see the standalone program will pop up in your screen. Here in the left side, you can see our four tabs. The first step is My Account. Here you can see your external messages and newsletters from our company, also your data, your company data, and your licenses, your uh, purchase licenses and license sessions. Also the latest and older versions of our programs you can download. Also some development ones. If you, would like, if you would like to submit a feature request, you can go and create a feature request in here also. The second tab is models. You can save your models under this project navigator and easily access them afterwards. Similar to that, the next step is templates. You can save your models as templates in the global center and you can access them afterwards. The last one is blocks, today's topic. You can see hundreds of blocks are stored in our uh, global center program. And for creating a block, if you go and double click one of the blocks, you can see the edit block dialog box in your screen. In edit block, you can choose where to insert your block exactly. Also, there are some parameters and inputs here. You can easily manipulate them. I will show you in our last example how to create these parameters and manipulate them. Also, you can see the JavaScript source code, source code inside it. Okay. Um, let's quickly go to the examples and create our first example. Let me first delete all. And our first example, I would like to show you how you can code in our integrated console. So if you go to the toolbar and click Open Console, you can see the integrated console. You can place it wherever you want here, or you can use it here, doesn't matter. And this console, uh, when I create some JavaScript script code, the program will respond immediately. And in the first example, I would like to create a kettle via beam loaded with a distributed load. So first, I need two nodes uh, for all of my beam. I'm typing the node. The first argument will be the tag of the node. It's node 1. And x, y, and z positions will be 0, 0, 0. So it's the origin node. I click Enter. So my node is created. Let me make it bigger. So the second node will be, I'm opening the brackets. This is the node 2. Let's say it's parameters on the x direction and 0, 0 in the y and z positions. As you can see, node is created. So uh, first, after the nodes, I can create my material. So I'm typing material. The first argument will be the tag, of course, and the second is the name of the material. So in this case, it's, it's S235 steel material. Think okay, my material is created. Now I have the material so I can create a section. I'm going to create a still section now. I'm typing section. This is section one and the name of the section, let's say IP240. And the last argument will be the tag of the material. I'm going to use material one. Section is also created here. So, <clears throat> sorry, so after we have the section, I can create my member now. Now I'm going to use a declaration to assign my member to a variable. So after assigning a variable, I can access this uh, member uh, properties after defining it. For this, I'm using const declaration. This is a JavaScript declaration. So I am going to give, it, give a name to this. Let's say this is my member and it's equal to new member, member tag is one. And the second argument is an array about the first node and the second node, it's beginning with node one and end with node two. So clicking OK, you want to see a line because I didn't assign a section yet. 
but since I have assigned this member to my member variable, now I can access it via my console. So I'm going to type my member and using plot notation, now I can assign my section start equals to section one I have already defined. As you can see, now I have my section in my member. So let's use same declaration for the nodal support. I would like to define a nodal support in the origin node, a fixed support. So I'm going to say, it, say const, this is my support, let's say, this is the name of it. So it's a new nodal support. This is nodal support one. And the second argument is an array and it should be on node one. Click OK. As you can see, there is a nodal support, but it's full empty because I didn't assign anything. So I'm going to access my support, my variable name. This is my support. Oh, sorry, my support. I'm going to use that notation again, fixed function I'm going to use and clicking OK. Now you can see now this is a fixed support. The geometry is done actually, so I can uh, begin to create my load. So for defining a load, I need two things. One is a static analysis settings or generally analysis settings. The second is a load case. So let me first create a static analysis settings. I'm using cones again. This is my analysis is equals to new static analysis settings. Now I can go a new line, but you can also use that notation on the same line again. So I'm going to show you here. It's, let's say, geometrically linear static analysis settings. But I have to give a text, so it's number one. Static analysis has created. So now I would like to create my load case. I'm saying it's my load case, and it's a new load case. I'm using the notation in the same line again. It's static anal oops, analysis. Opening my brackets. The first argument is a tech, of course. This is uh, log case one. The second argument is the name of this. So let's say this is that. The next argument is actually the tag of the static analysis i know it's one but let's say you have multiple uh, analysis so i can, I can go and create and uh, take my name so this is my analysis dot settings dot no so this will take the number one for me so the next argument is the action category actually this is a string you can go take a look at our documentation to find out the strings for action categories, but I know it, so I'm going to type it immediately here, action category permanent G. Okay, the last argument is the consideration of self weight. So this is an array, the first a member of the array is a boolean if you would like to think the self weight or not so i want it so i'm going to type true if i don't want i just type false the next three members of this array is the orientation of the self weight so it's zero on the x direction zero on the y direction and one on the z direction let's click okay now you can see our load has created here static analysis geometry linear and permanent now I have the load case, so that means I can create my load actually. So I'm going to say my load is equal to new member load one. And the second argument is the load case. So I can tell this is not my load case, and there's a function named get load case to define this load case. And the last argument is an array to tell the program which member do you want this load. So I created this on the member number one, clicking OK. You see nothing because we didn't assign any magnitude yet. So I'm going to type my load dot notation magnitude, let's say 2000. And you can see our load has been created. 
Okay, this is how you interact with the console, with the program. You can go and see our documentation. There are lots of um, functions I didn't show here, but the logic is pretty same. So, if you would like to create your scripts by a console, this is the way, or there is another way I want to show you today. You can go to the toolbar and open the script manager. In script manager, you can find default examples you can you can run in your models. So first I have to delete all the things to about overriding, but I can go and create um, some hole I have already defined. So you have the scripts in your RPM6 also. Let's uh, right click and run it. So you will see your hole is created in a few seconds. But um, also you can add some inputs to change the property of your hole in every insert. Let's delete all again. And go hole dialog input. I'm going to run this. And there is three inputs you can see. Now let's make them. This is let's make it a bigger hole now. Let's say 16 and six, eight. Okay, let's run. As you can see now, I have a bigger hole. This is how you can create some inputs for every insert. You can um, you can develop some scripts to save it here also. So how you can access the scripts actually better day. So you can go, let's close this, double click your RFM icon, go to open file location and go on folder back and you can see the scripts here in the examples folder. So if you would like to develop a new script, you can do it in this folder. For today's webinar, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code for Code Editor. I'm going to just drag and drop examples in my Visual Studio Code, and now I can see my function, uh, JavaScript files in the Code Editor. Let's close this. I'm going to make it bigger. For example, this is the whole.js we already ran in the program. This is the source code of it. So um, I'm going to create a steel tank creator in this folder also, and I'm going to add some inputs to it. For this, now I'm going to add a new file. Let's call it tank creator.js. Okay. I want to create a parametric tank creator, so I taught three different parameters. I'm going to assign it with const again. The first one is the diameter of the tank. Maybe I can make it bigger. Okay, this is better. Let's say the diameter of the tank is eight meters. So we can assign Wall height. Let's say this is six meters and the arc height also. It should be two meters for the beginning. After that, I'm going to parameterize it and we can change this variable. But for, for the beginning, I need them. So after that, I can assign my material. That's a steel, let's call it a steel material. It's equals to Material, open your brackets, one, and the name of the material is S 235. Yeah. Okay. Now I need three nodes to define my um, tank. First one is for the bottom circle, the second one is for the top circle, and the last one is the top of the arc. So my first node will be the node. This is not one, and in the X position, I want it to be on diameter divided by two, and zero, zero, and Y, and Z. Second node will be the same on the X direction, half of the diameter, and zero on the Y direction, but all height in the Z direction. Actually, I need to I need to make this is this as minus wall height because 
I'm using my Z direction as downwards. If you use it upwards, you don't need to do that. So the last one is node 3 for the top of the arc. It should be on 0 on the X, 0 on the Y, but let's open some brackets, wall height plus arc height. But it should be minus also. Okay. Semicolon. I am done with my nodes, so I can create my circles. So circles are defined under lines, so I need to access the line class first. Let's say this is line, line one. And the array of the start and end point, it's actually beginning at the point one and end and point one because it's a circle. So I can use a tab, um, that notation for type immediately. So it's lines dot type circle. Now my circle is going to be created, but there are some other attributes I have to assign now. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the line survey already defined, so you can access your defined lines with this array. This is the way to access line one, the first member of line survey dot circle center is equals a vector. So for vector, I'm using a constructor for dollar b, opening the brackets, and it's zero, 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 my circle center is. So the next one is, I'm going to assign one variable also to circle one. It's the circle radius. Let's say this is half of the diameter. And uh, of course I need the um, circle normal. So I need to assign my normal vector to, so let's say circle norm is equals, again, I have to create a vector constructor and it's on zero, zero, one. I have already created my bottom circle. Now I have to create my top circle. It's actually nearly the same. So I'm going to copy this lines and paste them so but it should be line two and actually it's beginning at node two and ending at node two and also i have to change them as two and maybe the circle center should be z direction for the top so it should be minus four right okay this four lines should be created the top circle one so um I have my two circles for my steel tank. Now I need a straight line to connect these two circles. So I'm going to type line again, open the brackets. This is line three. And let's create this line between one and two nodes so it can connect these two circles. After that, I'm going to create line four for the arc, actually. So Array should be begin with two, three. Now I can using I can use the uh, dot notation as type, and this is equals to lines type arc. Now I have defined my arc. I have to add a control point to my arc actually. So this is this is not line. This is lines. Okay, lines four dot arc control point is equals to use a constructor for vector. It's actually up to you. You can decide anything you want. Um, I'm going to go for diameter divided by 3.5 by on the z direction. And let's say this is minus, open some brackets, wall height plus, I need to divide our height also with some value, so I'm going to choose 1.5. This should be create the control point of dark. Okay, now it looks like all the lines and nodes are ready, so you can create my surfaces, but before that, I need to create a thickness to define my surfaces, so I'm going to type thickness. 
this is the this one. Let's give it a name. Let's call it this 12 millimeter. And the next argument will be the material text, so it's material one. And the last argument is the magnitude, so the, uh, thickness of the real thickness. Okay, let's say it 12 millimeters. Set column and uh, new line. So now I can create my surfaces. To create the surfaces, I'm going to type, as you can say, surface. This is surface one. Now I'm going to create a rotated surfaces. For this, I need uh, my boundary lines. So boundary lines should be one, the bottom circle, two, the top circle, and the three is the connecting line. So I'm going to type geometry in that rotation, and I'm going to access surfaces and say this is geometry rotated. Okay, now um, I've got to define the rotated boundary line for the surface. I'm going to reach it via surfaces one that rotation and say rotated boundary line is equals to lines three. This is the straight line we use. So after that, I need to assign a rotation angle actually. So let's say surfaces um, one and rotated angle of rotation is equals to, so it should be two pi and I can use embedded JavaScript library maths for it and access the pi and multiply it with two. I have some my first surface, now I need to arced roof surface. So let's say surface two and boundary lines would be two, three, four. And assign the geometry surfaces dot geometry rotated again and surfaces to rotated boundary line equals to lines for this time. This is the line of the arc. So surfaces to rotated angle of rotation is equals to mat dot I multiplied with two. Okay. Now it should be create my geometry at the program. One last thing, maybe we can add a line support. So create a line support now. So we const. I'm going to type my line support is equals to new line support. And it's line support one, and it should be on the line one, the bottom circle. So then say my line my line support dot imaged. Okay, now I have created my JavaScript file for creation of tank. So let's go to the RPM6, make it bigger. So immediately you can see uh, this is linked to our code editor, so tank creator is already here. So if I go and um, right click this, it should be creating the tank creator. Let's see if we made a mistake or this is working. Okay, nice. So there is no issues. This is what I meant to create a tank and rotated arc and the line support. Everything is here. Every time you want to create a tank, you can go here, double click, run, and your tank has been created. Also, let's let's parameterize it, parameterize it because we have already defined our parameters in the JavaScript, but we don't have to do that actually. As you can see in the whole dialog input, there is an XML file that you can give your inputs and take some inputs from every insert. So, what we can do is we can just copy and paste it and name it as the same name of your JavaScript file you want to link. It's tank creator. So now, <clears throat> sorry, now we have the tank creator.xml. So 
Let's split my screen. Okay. I have two um, parameters defined here. Let's take them to the XML file. This is diameter. This is wall height. And this is arc height. And after that, you can delete them or maybe comment them. So they are not going to run anymore. Let's take it here. Okay. So I have my diameter. Label name should have been a number of frames. This is what you're going to see on the simple GUI. So it should be tag diameter, maybe. Yeah. Tag diameter in meters. This should be wall height. And meters and archive in meters. Some default values you can you can uh, define. Let's see, eight six two be made. We can make the same. Eight six two. These are going to be our default values now. Let's go to the archive six and let's delete all. Now I'm going to go and run tank creator so you will see the script visit. There's a tank diameter, wall height, arc height, parameters, so I can I can select whatever let's say tank diameter is 10. Well make it bigger maybe, let's say 16, wall height 12 and arc height 4. Let's click run. And in a few seconds it will be ready with the new diameters. As you can see. So this is the way how you create some scripts for the script manager and save them and run them afterwards. Or there is another way to use JavaScript in um, in the Arpen. So I'm going to close the script manager. Let's take a look at the global center again. So you can go to blocks, and there were some blocks you can see, and I already showed you how to create a block and so, and if you want, you can create your own script and your own block, dynamic block, and insert them afterwards. So I'm going to show you how you can do it. Let's delete all again, or just do this. Now I want to create a geometry then i will save it as a block for my toolbar center let's create a section for it now don't have any section i'll select a page 300 for this and let's make it cantilever beam again for a simple example and let's take five meters and maybe another support. Effect support. Okay. Let's say I'm using cantilever beams a lot, so I'd like to save this uh, cantilever beam as a block in toolbar center, and after that, I would like to use it for inserts. So if you want, you can go to file, save as block, or you can use just control B, short cap, short um, K for it, and you can change your block name, block description, and here you can create a JavaScript file and link it. So what is it going to do if you link a JavaScript file? With this, you can create some input data and some functions in your JavaScript data so you can make it dynamic. So I don't have any JavaScript file because now I'm going to create it. I'm going to close it. Let go of my code editor again. Let's create a dynamic block. I'll call it dynamic beam.js. So now I'm going to create a block for the global center. Um, there is two main functions we have for the global center dynamic blocks. The first one is function input data.
In this function, you can define your inputs you would like to take from the user, or if you are going to use it yourself, you would like to change uh, in every insert you can take from input data. The second function is generate. In this block, you can generate your geometry or whatever you want in your block. So let's begin with um, creating some input data. Let's say you want to create some geometry. So first, you have to define your category. So the name of this category is geometry. Now, one step further, now I have to take an input from the user. So uh, for the dynamic beam I'm going to create, I would like to take a length of the beam. So this is a parameter plot. Open my brackets. First argument is the column length. The second argument is the key. Actually, we are going to publish a knowledge base article about these par parameters and arguments that you can find. So the next one is the symbol. I don't want any symbol. I'm typing into this empty. The next one is the default value. Let's, I think we put it on five meters. So let's say five. And the next argument is the unit. So this is unit length I'd like to take. And the other argument is the minimum value, so it should be zero. And next argument is the step. Let's take a zero point font as the steps. And the maximum value, I don't want to take any maximum value, so I'm saying this is none. So next two arguments is minimum inclusive, maximum inclusive. I just don't want them, so false, false. So that's all to get a length input from your block. So we can create maybe an input for the other support. So let's say this is category support and not support. Opening my brackets, not support one. Let's say this is not support as the name. Okay, now I actually finished with my inputs. So these inputs will be the inputs I will see in the edit block style of box. So I can begin to create. Now I will create two nodes. As you know, I will dig that. So I need my same column here. Node two. Now the node two exposition is actually it's parametric, so I'm going to take this key in the generate function. So it's L actually, and Y is zero, set to zero. So now I'm going to create the material. This is material one. The name of the material is the still material as always. So create a section, not selection, reception. And the first argument is the section is the tag of the section, and the second is the name of the section, IP 300, and material assignment is I want to use material one. Okay. Now I can define my member. It's new member, and it's member tag one, and begins with node one and speed not two. And I have to assign a section to it. So section start is equals to one. Finally, I can assign my nodal support now. Maybe we can access our node and assign nodal support as a function of the node. It, it is possible also. So I'm going to type nodes to node one. And it is an attribute named support actually. And it's equals to nodal support here because this is an input also nodal support and nodal support one Oops, not here here okay so actually this 20 lines of code should generate our block in the global center 
And let's have a look if it's working fine or not. I'm going to save it and maybe take it to the desktop to find it easily. So click open. Now I'm going to file here, file and save as block. And let's say this is dynamic B as a block name. So Cantolivia dynamic beam. And you can save one of the model categories here. Let's save it under others so we can find it easily. And finally, I can add my JavaScript file here in the desktop dynamic beam. Click OK. OK. Now I have to wait. The preview will be ready and it's going to install it in the global center. Okay, it's actually ready now. So I can delete it maybe. So open the global center again. And go to blocks, others here, and I can see my dynamic beam here. You can see the properties of it. It's created by me just now. And this is the right one. So what happens if I double click it? I will see the edit blocks here. So I can insert this beam every coordinate I want. And now in the structure, you can see my inputs. I have created these inputs. Let's have a look. Yeah, this is this is the input one category geometry category create the step and the column length is the name it, it, it should be actually beam length but yeah it doesn't matter and L and your length and blah 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 and the model support it's here so if you go here and take a look at the JavaScript file this is the JavaScript file I have just linked and created this beam. So let's say, let's make it bigger maybe to see if it's working or not. And click OK and it has been created, as you can see. This is how we create blocks. And also if you go, for example, silos and storage tanks, you can see our default ones and you can create and you can find all the JavaScript files and you can create your own blocks and embed it in the toolbar center so you can easily re-access them. Okay, I think um, that's uh, all I would like to show today. I hope it was beneficial for you and thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Um, let us switch to my screen. Um, Okay, so yeah, that's all for today's webinar. And uh, now I show you quickly um, our website where you can find the webinars as well as the free for, free for trial version. It's here on top of the page. Um, there you have the trial version for RFM6, R Step 9, R Section 1, and R2. Um, and RFM6 and R Step 9 includes all the add ons. Uh, for the full 90 days. And then here on the news and events, webinars, you find all the um, upcoming webinars as well as the past webinars. And here you have the event page um, from today's webinar where I will upload the recorded webinar tomorrow, probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. And here when you scroll a little bit below you find here you find your presentation slides as well and yeah that's it for today so uh, when you leave the webinar there's a survey so it'd be nice for you if you shortly take the time to answer the questions um, it's quite important for our quality management and the worst score is one and the best score is five 
And so, yeah, thank you for your attention and thanks to my colleagues for the presentation and answering the questions. Have a nice day. Goodbye. And hopefully see you next time.